I only I've only successfully sized up on the OTC dip buys like during the mania and when I was doing that I was throwing in like 30 40 50 grand on a dip buy What's up, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader here with a special treat for you. Um, I'm here in Vegas, I got a badass suite, meeting with some of my top students. Two of these students joined me for a challenge webinar. If you actually click the link below, you can join in on my challenge webinars every week. Students get two, three, sometimes four live webinars. But in this webinar, you're gonna hear, not just from me, I talk a lot, but from two of my top upcoming students, Jack Schwartz, who's closing in on three million in profits, Clay Ruff, who's new to talking about his experiences publicly. He's at around $800,000 in profits, just 22 years old. Um, and it's fascinating to hear uh, their ups and their downs and their whole journey. I think you can learn a lot. Uh, so watch this video, take notes, do me a favor, leave a comment below, congratulate Jack, congratulate Clay, thank them for sharing their information and their journey. You know, they're trying to pay it forward so that you can uh, hopefully learn from their mistakes and have the right perspective and I can't thank them enough. You know, I want more successful students, but I love it when students help me mentor other students. Um, that's why this community is so great. So get ready, check this out and take notes. Here with Handsome Jack, Jack Schwartz with Clay Ruff. How's it going, guys? Doing good. What do you got? You can you can hold up what you're drinking. Look at this guy. Chose Bud Light. What's Saint up, Lewis. man? Where you got your drink? Let's see what we got. He's modeled the Modelo. Look at this. <laughs> Congratulations. Look at this. All right. Would you guys prefer you in zoom in on the guys in the back? How do I do that? You can't zoom. You gotta move it. I don't know how to do this. What do you think I'm technologically smart? <laughs> You're wrong. Anyways, we are here in Vegas. Just did an all day live trading. You made 5,500. Mm -hmm. Did you make anything? 1,600. You didn't even say anything. What were you trading? Shop calls. Shop and belly. Okay. All right. <laughs> I made about 1,500 too. So we feel pretty good. Um, small gains add up. Clay Ruff, you might not know, he's at around 800,000. Jack, he doesn't know exactly what he's at, 2.93 million. Are you over three? I wanted to like celebrate a milestone. I don't know, I'll tell you when the Chinese pump falls. <laughs> Which stock are you short? Which Chinese pump are you shorting? I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> Just name the first letter of the ticker. T. <laughs> T-N-O-N. Uh, no, I was short that a long time ago. Oh, okay. I don't know. Let's see if you guys can get, if you can understand it. Yeah, we're going to record this. Don't worry. We're recording it on another camera, too. If this has any technical glitches, we're learning to just record everything multiple ways. Um, throw out any questions you have for these guys. This is a QA. and a I'm going to throw out some questions. Um, Clay, you mentioned during today in, in the conference room, you're not too happy right now. Why are you not happy making $800,000 as a 22 year old? Uh, mainly because I'm like the only bearish trader that I know. Oh, bearish trader Look at that, this guy. that is red on the year. Because I blew up on Tesla, blew up. I mean, I lost like 70K in a month, like five, 10K a day, like seven days in a row, just being stubborn. On options, trading weeklies instead of trading the swing. And uh, now it's down 50% from where I was shorting, or like 45. So all I had to do was buy time, but. Let me just correct that. You didn't blow up. In your mind, you might have blown right. up. In I mean, reality, you lost less than 10% of your account. Right. Which is still not good, but you didn't blow up. Blowing up is like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90%. Like Michael blow, Saylor. Blowing up for me, because like that's a 10% drawdown is like. I'm, I'm not saying it's a good thing. You're going to have to drink 10 Modelos tonight to make up for it. <laughs> that's going to be your thing. But at the same time, you didn't blow up. This is what I love about you know our community. Thousand. If you <laughs> cut losses, what'd you say? I said one Modelo for every thousand. Yeah, exactly. Not <laughs> ninety. We're not losing. We're not drinking that many. It's Eighty. <laughs> I'm terrible at math. The point is, uh, is that you know, even with your big mistake, you still manage to not like lose huge, and it's weighing down heavily on you. This guy lost eighty thousand once upon a time too. How did you feel? What did you do? Um, back in May, I mean, I'm I was completely depressed. This. Like uh, May 2019, right? And Is that what, what did you do? I don't know. That was your first $80,000. Yeah. We went over today, for those of you who weren't here in Vegas, uh, the first three years, 
Jack lost 3,000, 3,000, 4,000? Yeah. Was your third year the biggest loss of the three? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he no. stuck with it. Despite losing basically $10,000 his first three years, year four, he made 80K, but you lost it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it started with one really bad trade where I was just going in and out, in and out, paper cutting myself to death because I'm like, this is the setup, even though looking back, it wasn't the setup, it just kind of resembled the yeah. setup. Yeah. But there were so many other factors at play and I didn't understand it. And I was just like, now it'll die. Now it'll die. Now it'll die. <laughs> And it just he likes this. Look at this. You guys are like two bears where it's like, right. oh, these guys are like, yeah, I can yeah. feel that. So it started with that day where I lost like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars on an eighty thousand dollar account. Just two thousand to four thousand dollar like paper cuts. And then after that my head just went crazy and I was just doing reckless stuff in the market without regard to risk management, saying, Okay, this is a good one. This was only three years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess three years. <laughs> but you've made millions since. Yeah. What changed from your reckless trading to your successful trading? Uh, I always, well, one, the COVID market, there was so much opportunity. Everything yeah. that I have studied before, it was in play. Yeah. No matter like what strategy you had, you could even buy an offering and it would go up. But every strategy to me was like gold. in play. It yeah. was gold. hundred percent. It was a perfect era for any strategy. And, but... Also, in addition to that, it was having like time off. I mean, that was like the first summer where I took a trip to Austin to like meet up with my college friend and like we just had fun for a weekend. I never really spent like a full weekend. Like I would be in bars looking up charts and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, out all the time. And like, that's just who I was. That's what I did. And like, this is the first time where I just disconnected from the market. It's good to have a little perspective. Yeah. What did you do with your 80,000? You lost 80,000? Yeah. Was it on one trade or multiple trades like him? It was like a, I think it was a ninety-five thousand dollar drawdown, but seventy seventy was all on Tesla. Like okay. when it had its twelve green days in a row. Yeah, uh, that was a big psychological hit because I just bought a house in June and I paid cash for the house. Damn. So and then I had the taxes come. Damn. Out. So I started off the year up 40 grand and I was like, all right, time to start pushing so I can pay for the taxes, yeah. get my account back. So you then, wanted to pay for real world expenses with trading profits. And, it's and a slippery slope. This is also a problem because like when I first started, like when I first found you, I was like, all right, like trading is going to be my career, but I'm going to have multiple incomes to, to pay for my living. And I can remember a video you made, like the average millionaire has seven, seven. multiple incomes. Seven streams. streams of income. Yeah. So that was a big goal, but... In 2018, when I started, I tried to do like five different things, like affiliate marketing. I got my insurance licenses, and uh, I was trying trading and s something else on top of that. So it was like putting my focus everywhere. Much, where yeah. if I had just focused on trading, like I probably would have executed way better in the Corona crash. How did those other businesses do? They went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> they went absolutely nowhere. So this is the interesting thing. The average millionaire does have seven streams of income, but you got to try a bunch of stuff. You might have to try 20 strategies or 50 strategies to find the seven best. It's not just like, oh, let me try seven. I'm smart. All of them are going to hit. There's so much BS out there from like drop shipping. Uh, you know, there's so many different strategies out there where they promise big things and it just doesn't pan out that way. Like this is why I got started teaching. I'm like, I'm not the best trader, but I know what I teach is real. Let me throw that out there and then let, you know, the dedicated rise to the top. So, you know, you got to keep rising. 1600 today? Yeah. Were you happy with that? No, because I Oh my god. Most, most of that was on swings and like actually day trading today. Like I realized 1600 overall, but day trading, I took a loss on shop like $900 and if I had just held or or uh, reinitiated actually that probably would have made like five to ten so I could have did better it's not about the money it's just about the ex process. executing yeah. if you execute your plan and you focus on your process the money will come to you this is why literally several of the top students they turn off their profit and loss column when they're trading because mm -hmm. they're like I want to focus on the chart that's it I can't do that I'm like way too you know crazy but do you do that? Um, you know, I don't typically, like I leave it up, but I'm not like staring at it. 
Although today and yesterday, yesterday I made about like sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars, and then today it was like fifty five hundred. I wasn't. My P and L was all hidden, and it was actually pretty nice. <laughs> it was pretty nice. I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about that. Um, let's see. Uh, quick questions. Uh, yeah, Ellis gave in, uh, gave a webinar today. Awesome job. We will get more Ellis webinars. Uh, let's see. Would you start to increase shares after being consistent for two months? When did you guys start sizing up in your journey? Um, so when I was really like taking off in May or March 2019 or whatever, the more money I got, the more I shorted, and that's just how I was, and that's ultimately what led to my demise in that, you know, time. So you sized so, up too quickly, yeah. and that's what led to your eighty thousand dollar loss. I thoroughly believe that that is like the number one reason why people do blow up in trading, because like. But you have to size up. I mean, in order to get to the eighty thousand, yeah. you did something right. It's not like you sized oh, yeah. up after not winning at all. Yeah. You you were losing, losing, losing for four years. Mm -hmm. In the fourth year, something clicked. How did you make the 80K in the first place? Was that sizing up or were you just dead on? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it was sizing up. Because, like, you know, if I had $25,000, I would just short it all and then I would make like in five grand and then you I would short You would go 000. all in. You go all in on one <laughs> trade? Yeah, I would. Well, because I had so much, like, <laughs> well, I thought I had more data than I had, you know. We always think we're better than we are. How about you never go all in, no matter how much data, because anything good. can happen. How about that? How about that? Right? Very good point. But you sized in, you made the 80K, you're feeling good, and then you learned the hard lesson. Yeah. You might have sized up too quickly. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. When did you, so then you lost the 80K, then yeah. what happened? Um, it was all reset. I kept like paper cutting myself after that, and then I realized like, I just can't really trade. So you wake up depressed and you're like, why can't I be a trader? Am I not cut out for this? And, yeah. You know, you're kicking yourself. And then after like, I actually took like a real break. Yeah. I finally came back and like refunded my account. And how was, long of a break did you take? I didn't get really back into trading until December. So you took so from May to December. Really? Yeah. You took that long of a break, but it cleared yeah. your head. Yeah. Were you, were you studying or you just weren't studying or anything? You just completely ignored the markets? I couldn't. I would watch the markets for sure. Yeah. But I I just couldn't really do anything, I feel. Okay. I don't know. It, it all kind of is a blur no, it's fair at enough. this point. That's fair enough. What did you do when you started sizing up? So for me, it was dependent on strategy. Like... I only I've only successfully sized up on the OTC dip buys like during the mania and when I was doing that I was throwing in like 30 40 50 grand on a dip buy making yeah. 10 15 but I tried to that carry nice. carry that into shorting on LWLG and Ooh. NLST Ooh. <laughs> and <laughs> I lost like 40k in a month on that and took my short account like I grew that from like 20 to 70, took it all the way back down. So, that so you're learning different strategies have different odds of success. You can't mm -hmm. just throw equal dollar amounts at every strategy. And then options was like, I learned options all on my own, like for the first year and it was just a bunch of pain, like kind of went nowhere, just a bunch of wasted, not really wasted time, but like. But you traded small? Uh, not as small as I should have. <laughs> but then on the Tesla, like, this year is when I really started to size up options. And uh, the few times that I've taken big size on options, I've gotten smoked. Like I lost 54 grand on mRNA on a dip uh, Moderna. I know and, it. Yeah, I lost like 20K in a day on Tesla, 10K. Maybe 10K, you should 10K. just focus on OTCs since that's what's worked best for you? OTCs are definitely the, the easiest to be consistent with. Right? So, I mean, so you you're up basically eight hundred thousand right now. Like eight twenty, eight thirty. Out of the eight hundred thousand, what what percent of that is OTCs? Uh, seventy, eighty, or ninety, or ninety-five. Probably seventy. Okay, that's fair. It's not just about any one strategy, guys. Like it's good to try different strategies. The reason why I'm bringing this up, you're not gonna you know make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Like you have to learn what to do, what not to do. You can't just be like, oh, let me try one strategy and stay with that forever. If you do, OTCs have been pretty dead until lately with CMGR, SYSX, right? Did you trade SYSX today? Did you see it? Did you watch it? No, I didn't. I will say <laughs> don't, don't try to learn too many strategies at once, though. 
because like when I started out I just wanted to learn everything like I just study every strategy I could and then like breakouts would be happening and I wouldn't be playing them because I was studying how to short and I, I think like, there's a happy medium like three four five six maybe mm -hmm. seven strategies but not like a hundred and not one right right like you got to find what works for you and you know maybe it's options maybe it's short selling maybe it's OTCs we're all a little different and it's pretty interesting to see what's really worked um, but when something is not working do you size down immediately or how many times do you give it until you start like being like wait a minute this isn't working how many trades or how much in dollar losses um hmm. i don't know i really don't have much of like a analyze your <laughs> shit <laughs> man i mean i just know exactly how much i'm risking like on the trade and i mean you don't I even don't. know don't <laughs> don't for don't fake an answer what about you clay well, I would say actually one of my biggest struggles as a trader is consistently sizing the same on every position. You want to do that or you don't want to do I that? I do because my, my data, my options data, like if I put five grand in every single trade that I've ever taken and like taken the percentages that I've made, it would be like 600K in overall profits the last time that I analyzed it, which is a couple months ago. But instead, like all my biggest losers are biggest size, and then all of my 100%, 500% winners are below my mean, like average size that I'm taking. So, so. you have a spreadsheet with all this data? Yeah, which I kind of stopped updating it once That's I kind of went through the, the big hit. It's a little psychological <laughs> damage. So you don't analyze your stuff, you just know it because you're like a math genius. You stopped <laughs> analyzing when you lost big? Got a little bit depressed. And <laughs> I've, I've definitely been there. <laughs> but you know, you shouldn't hurt your education. Yourself, You're only hurting uh, yourself by not doing. Yeah, I just, see some people like, oh, I'm depressed. I'm, I'm not gonna track anything. That only hurts you're you. You're just yeah. delaying the success okay. of the future for sure. Definitely. I mean, like, I would say the knowledge that I have, like where I'm at, is just, it's definitely un I've underperformed. Yeah. Like compared to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, question, uh, when I say Jack lost 3K, do you mean he was making money, then losing money, and eventually lost an overall 3K? So, uh, sorry, I should have explained, in the conference today, Jack explained year one, he basically lost 3K, yeah. year two, 3K, year three, th 4K. Mm -hmm. So between his first three years, he basically lost 10 grand. Not that you were yeah. losing all the time, right. but that was what it added up to overall. Oh yeah, that would be like the net loss on the year. Yeah, how did that feel? I mean, it doesn't feel good. Like uh, you sign up to learn, and like you're just not getting the hang of trading. So it's like, what results do you have to show for any of this? It's like, because you can tell people I'm learning a lot, but there was no results to show for it. So I was There's just no being, results. Like, poked at. So you're like, yo, I'm learning, <laughs> and everyone's like, that's not what your profit and loss is. Like you're literally losing money. How is that learning? Was it your mom? Was it dad? Friends? Family? Who was poking you? Oh, I'm everybody? Not yeah, it was everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Listen, you've been <laughs> successful. Do you know how many unsuccessful people are watching right now? Like, you should mm -hmm. go into the details. Was yeah. it your mom? Was it your dad? Was it a sibling? Yeah, I mean, it was, all of them. So my mom was always supportive. Okay, she has mom. to be. Yeah, she's forced to. But your dad is like, stop losing. <laughs> He's like, so, uh, <laughs> that's <was> trading. <laughs> what happened when you changed it? when you went from negative to like really positive? Well, what was your parents' reaction? They didn't know until I made really my first million. They're they like, thought you were still losing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're giving you crap and you're just sitting there, you're just taking it and you're yeah. like. And then I'm like up half a million, 700. Did you record telling them that you were a millionaire? You no. should have recorded that. I should have. What was their reaction? I think my mom said like, Holy shit, what? <laughs> <laughs> and she never cusses. So What'd your hilarious. dad say? Man, I don't know. <laughs> your I mom's mean, swearing. He was like very proud. What about your parents? Have they been for it or against it? Uh, my dad was always supportive. He actually, when I first started, like made 30 grand in the uh, weed stock boom in like 2018. Yeah. Yeah, he he was like wanting to give me a bunch of money. I'm like, no, I'm like, no, I'm not. You're not ready for enough. it. Yeah. And then I ended up like investing it all. Wait, you know? this 2018, what you were like 17, 18 years I, old? I was. Yeah, I was 18. Damn, it was, dude. My, it was like right after high school, but he like always believed in me. And then my mom like was like, when are you ever gonna get a real job? Oh, I remember her oh, telling me that, and it just like. I don't know, a little fire. Do they, like, that's good. No, my haters light uh -huh. a fire for me. It's like, oh, you think I'm a scam? I'll freaking go nuts on you. Like, that makes me work harder. 
Um, do they know how successful you are now? Yeah. What do they think? Uh, long time coming is what they said, basically. You're 22 years old. It's not a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. That's completely I, wrong. I, I just... Crazy parents, you're wrong. <laughs> long time coming. He's 22. He's made nearly a million dollars. Not. It's not a long time coming. <laughs> they just know like how hard. Like, I mean, I'd be watching your videos for like 10 hours a day. You know, just over and over and over. And they just see me out on the laptop, like out by the pool. Like, that's cool. Are you ever gonna like get away from the screens? I'm like, yeah, when I'm rich. So, so like, it's <laughs> like you're by the pool. You're out in the sun watching the laptop. Yeah, because I because that was the one thing that I didn't like about trading. Is yeah. Like, not getting to be outside. So you can. Yeah. You see me with my laptop, right? It's not safe. Don't try that at home. <laughs> um, insert Pascal in this video. Insert uh, Dustin Hoffman from The Graduate where he's like in the pool and he's floating and his dad is like, when are you going to get a real job? But it's like, he's the new graduate. Plastics. Wait, let's get, yeah, plastics. <laughs> Give him some sunglasses. There's some sunglasses around here. Let's get a picture of him. And we're going to put, have you seen The Graduate? You haven't seen The Graduate. No, I'm asking him. So watch, put this on, put this on. Wait, zoom in on his face right now. We're going to, we're going to insert this of like, use the, use, is that what you do like in the pool? What do you normally do in the pool? What's your pool studying post? Pool, pool studying post. PSP. What do you do? <laughs> did, you, did you get that? Or should he have to hold it, hold it a little longer? Pool studying post. Okay, you got that? All right, so we're going to put him in the pool. It's like the scene from The Graduate with the sunglasses. And the dad is like, what are you doing, Benjamin? Oh my God. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Have you seen The Graduate? Say yes if you've seen The Graduate. Say no if you have no culture whatsoever. Um, quick question. Uh, haven't heard much from these guys. What advice do these guys have for newer traders? Good question. What's your advice for newer traders other than study uh, outside by the pool? Well, definitely like study as much as you can up front, but track your strategies, track your patterns, figure out what works for you and figure out what matches your personality. Because like different things work for different traders. Don't just try to copy what works for somebody else. And uh, my approach was learn from as many millionaires as possible. And inevitably I'll become a millionaire. That's always been my mindset. One sec, we got room service. This is my, my freaking tip is just don't go out that much and order room service. Hey, how's it going? Whoa, let me sign in with the room shots. Yeah. Hey, what's your tip, Jack? You gotta give a tip. I mean, you go for the beer when I'm gone. <laughs> what's your tip for everybody? Uh, first and foremost, especially for a new trader, you have to cut losses quickly. I mean, when I was starting out, I did not have much money. Like, I was telling somebody at the boot camp. Every single time I got like a $20 bill or like a $50 bill on my birthday or something, I was like hoarding the money because to me that was like one more trade that I could take and learn from. And so you have to cut losses quickly first and then piggybacking off of Clay, even to this day, like I'm still learning from like other very successful traders and like I'm taking bits and pieces from them and implementing that into like my own strategies and like what I see in the market. Like you can never go wrong with like learning what other successful people do. I like that. What did you learn? I'll, I'll add to this. What did you guys learn at today's conference? Did you learn from like upcoming traders? Did you see anything that, that you can add to your arsenal that they're doing wrong maybe? Yeah, Roland was talking a lot about the reverse split plays and I remember him mentioning that months ago and he's like, you know, I kind of like the fact that all these stocks are getting beaten down under a dollar because now they're going to have to reverse split and hold their price above one. And that's every runner that's been going on. Yeah. No. How did pets finish up today? Uh, it started spiking, I think. I saw it spiked. Ah, oh, it's choppy. Yeah. Oh, that's so tough, though. I don't know how to trade that, dude. You got the initial spike. Did dogs do anything? Well, here's the thing. Dogs it has such a high anything. volatility that that's something that will catch shorts off guard. Yeah. No, 100%. I don't know. What'd you learn at the conference today? Uh, I had a good reminder, like, networking is key. That was a big thing I took. Like, it's so important on who you communicate with, who you talk to on a daily basis, who you try to learn from, reach out to. Yeah. Just, uh, no, we had some really good good people. Apparently, there's a there's another millionaire that I didn't even know about, Brent. I'm going to call him out tomorrow. Did you know that there's a, a millionaire named Brent? And he's over a million. He told Roland he's over a million. Yeah. He didn't tell me, Brent. <laughs> Some people don't like the attention. I understand that. No offense, Brent, but I'm going to call you out tomorrow. 
I don't know if you're here in this chat room, but pretty special when you're making a million bucks. Um, also, uh, there was a guy who was up 160,000 and there was a guy who actually printed out all of his trades. He was like walking with us back. I don't know if you saw, he, he like printed everything out and he made like 5,000 in the past like month and a half, but he's just taking small gains yeah. on like RDBX, MULN, just the low price, you know, volatile plays. And it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So I was pumped about that. Let's see, another question. Um, what are your bread and butter uh, setups in current market conditions? Uh, right now, I love the bounce shorts. So, uh, like for example, SIDU, uh, one green day big, second green day went even higher, and I, I think it was chopping around. Yeah. And then it gapped down, and then I think it was this Monday it had a gap up into resistance, and that's where I was enjoying the short. You were enjoying the short. Yeah, I was just. Short I mean, one to the nines. Think right here. You were shorting yeah. that, and then also you were shorting um, Revlon. Yeah. Similar kinds yeah. of ridiculous over. run ups from the ones to the eights to the nines. Yeah, overextended gap down. And I know so many people that were shorting like huge size yesterday on yeah. it and like the eights and the nines. They're just getting stopped out like crazy. And I said it multiple times. I'm like, this looks like range bound, like choppy garbage. Yeah. I said it at like 6 a.m., two hours before the market opened, and nobody wanted to listen to me. And they were just getting chopped up. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Let them not listen to you. Clay, what are your bread and butter setups right now? If you have any. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any bread and butters right now. I've just been trading, trading small, trading actively, but mainly just focusing on like Shopify to get back into the flow of things because I'm still trying to, to learn how to size again on small caps because it's been so long since I've traded like listed stocks because I've just been, I've just been on the options like constantly. So I'm, I'm learning, I'm relearning how to trade small caps and how to size because I'm used to putting in like five grand to try to make like 20. And now I gotta put in like 50 grand and try to make like five. So it's kind of just, I'm a. What's the biggest mistake that you guys see traders making? Sizing up too quickly. Sizing up too quickly and then uh, one thing, take a bunch of paper cuts. They'll just like, they'll get mad at the stock and they'll fight it. Emotions, you know? yes. They'll say, okay, I'll try again. I'll try again. But, but they'll just fight. 